Hello everyone, and welcome back to Deciphering Weather. In today's video, we will look back in weather history to May 22nd, 2011 to Joplin, Missouri, and decipher the destructive power of this EF5 tornado. If you like detailed weather breakdowns, hit the subscribe button and notification bell for all of my upcoming videos. First, let's start off with a visible satellite image of Joplin, Missouri on May 22nd, 2011. It shows an impressive supercell that would create the monster EF5 tornado that would hit Joplin, Missouri that day. And in this photo, uh, you can see it's taken just outside Joplin, Missouri. It has the classic mothership structure to the supercell and that is uh, shown there with the, ro the banding of the rotating clouds that are above the base of the storm. And this uh, photo is of the actual Joplin tornado moments after touching down. At this point, it looks to be about an EF2 on the uh, Fujita scale, a tornado damage scale that was created by Ted Fujita after the super outbreak in the 1970s. It goes from a low rating of EF0, which is the weakest, to an EF5, which is the strongest. And Jopl Joplin, Missouri's tornado would eventually be classified as an EF5 based on the destructive past, uh, path that you will see later in this video. So on May 22, 2011, the National Weather Service Storm Prediction Center had Joplin, Missouri under a moderate threat for severe weather that day. And in the afternoon, they issued tornado watches that, uh, for the thunderstorms that had started to form across the central plains and would move in an eastward direction. The tornado watches would be in effect until 9 p.m. that night. Shortly before a uh, touchdown, you can see a hook echo forming on radar just to the west of Joplin. At 5.17 p.m. Uh, central time, the National Weather Service issued a tornado warning for Jasper and Newton counties in Missouri. The warning was issued 17 minutes before the tornado uh, ran through Joplin, Missouri. Minutes later, you can see the hook echo just starting to enter Joplin, Missouri. Joplin, Missouri has a population of roughly 50,000 people that would be affected by this tornado. On this radar scan, you can see the hook echo moving through Joplin and see a flare-up of pink on the radar. That is the radar picking up the echo of the debris that is being created by the tornado as it rolls through the city. And the debris ball only grows larger uh, as on the next radar slide as the tornado continues to destroy the city. After being on the ground for about 38 minutes, the tornado dissipated around 6.12 p.m. Central Time on May 22, 2011. Looking at the Doppler radar, this shows the winds moving towards or away from the radar station. The green on the Doppler radar is winds that are moving towards the radar, and the red is winds that are moving away from the radar station. And when you have red and green right next to each other, it means you have very strong rotation in the winds uh, or winds that are changing direction very rapidly, and it's indicative of a tornado. Besides the hook echo on the previous radar images, this is how meteorologists at the National Weather Service know when to issue a tornado warning. And as you can see, uh, this is the Doppler radar just west of Joplin, Missouri. And you have a light and green um, pixel that are right next to each other. And this is the indication on radar of a tornado and why they issued the tornado warning uh, 17 minutes before uh, it went through the city of Joplin. Then by the next slide, you can see that those two uh, red and green pixels are moving through the city of Joplin and have become even brighter. This is in the contrast between the red and the green. Uh, this allows the meteorologists to estimate the winds of the tornado, and they had clocked them uh, to be in excess of 200 miles per hour 
or an EF5 uh, strength on the Fujita scale. And that's equivalent to a very strong Category 5 hurricane. By the next slide, the tornado is leaving uh, Joplin, Missouri. And in this frame, you can see that the tornado intensity is weakening after crossing I-44, which is the red line going through the middle of the image. Here you can see the track of the tornado. As you can see, after touching down, it rapidly intensified to an EF2, as shown in the image uh, in this video earlier. It crossed into Jasper County as an EF5 tornado traveling roughly east-northeast through the city. It then made a right turn and started to weaken traveling southeast for the remaining time as it was on the ground for a total of 38 minutes. Here you can see a map of the destructive path of the tornado. At its widest, the EF5 tornado was a mile wide. The green shows the moderate damage caused by the tornado, and the red on this map shows the, the catastrophic damage that was caused by the EF5 portion of the tornado. This, is, this image is of an aerial view of Joplin, Missouri around its high school. You can see the homes were completely leveled or swept away uh, off its foundation, which is why it was given an EF5 rating. Uh, on this uh, destructive uh, scale. And then here's another image of the tornado damage uh, which completely obliterated these homes. And then here's just a close-up image of those same homes from ground level. St. John's Regional Medical Center uh, is a hospital in uh, Joplin, Missouri, and it was in the direct path of the tornado. Um, this is what the hospital looked like before the tornado had hit. And then after the tornado came through the city, this is what the hospital looked like. Completely uh, destroyed, windows blown out, walls knocked over, utter, utter destruction. And you can see that even better in the uh, aerial fo photo from above. The tornado had destroyed the hospital so bad that they actually had to tear down the, uh, the hospital and it had to be replaced. So St. John's Regional Medical Center was replaced by Mercy Hospital Joplin in two years after the tornado hit. In all, the tornado killed 158 people, injured 1,150 others, and the total damage cost about $2.8 billion. Thank you for watching this video. If you liked it, please hit the like button and leave a comment if you want more videos like this. Be sure to share it with your family and friends on social media. Please subscribe to the channel to get all of my upcoming videos, and I'll see you in the next video.